All right, let's go. Same as the other ones. If, if you ever have a specific question for a certain corner, don't wait till the end of, of, of the walkthrough and just ask it. You can interrupt me. It's uh, Don't worry about it. So it's, it's better if you interrupt me just so that we're at the actual corner and, and we can look at actual references if you do have a question where that would help. So yeah, so for turn one, you want to start breaking at probably five to ten meters after the end of the grass here on the on the left side. So when the grass ends and the uh, pavement starts about five to ten meters after that, that's when you want to start breaking. But it's, it's very important to stay parallel and right on, on the white line as you're breaking in a straight line. Because a, a couple of people, for example, will turn the car slightly first and then get on the brakes in a straight line. So they're, they're already braking at a, at a diagonal, aiming towards, towards the apex somewhat. Make sure you just keep the car parallel to the white line on the outside as you're braking. And you want to turn in fairly early. It's, it's very likely that at the moment you may be turning in a, a bit too late. Because uh, I think you especially gain quite a bit of grip uh, for this corner if you want to get uh, the most grip possible, simply because because the track all throughout uh, sort of slopes outwards. So it's off camber a little bit, but it's slightly less off camber towards the inside. So you get a bit a bit extra grip the closer you are on the inside. So turn in a tiny bit earlier than what you'd expect, I guess. By the apex, you should be able to uh, to get on the throttle completely and not run out of uh, of room on exit. And again, for for this corner, it's it's very very common to you've probably experienced that it. it's very common to get the the back of the car uh, very loose as you're braking or as you're turning in. Well, really, as you're turning in. And and for that, really, the the, the best remedy would be to keep your brake reference where it is, so keep braking at the at the same spot, uh, and just get used to having the car a, a bit uh, a bit loose and, and be be ready to maybe use a tiny bit of throttle just to settle the rear of the car. What so gear? I'm sorry, what gear would you be in right here? F fourth gear. So you're okay. revving in fifth gear, and you're only dropping down one gear in, into fourth. Just get used to being a bit more comfortable with the rear of the car moving around through here. And, and you want to be ready to be able to use a bit of throttle. Just a tiny spike of throttle to, to transfer a bit of the weight of the car to, towards the rear tires. That'll give you a bit more grip compared to the front. And that'll uh, make the car a lot more stable if it was previously uh, oversteering. And, and, and you'll find that that'll help you quite a bit to, to get the car a bit more, more in check through here. But again, don't don't use it automatically. Don't leave the throttle on a tiny bit every single time you go through the corner. Do it more as a reaction to getting actual oversteer, not as not as a prevention. So only use the throttle if you do feel the the oversteer kicking in. So yep, yeah, you should be on the throttle then. By by the time you hit the apex there, and you should not run out of room. Uh, on exit through here. You also probably know what happens if, if you hit the curb on the outside here. Sometimes. <laughs> it's very strange. Sometimes, if, if you keep your wheel straight, you're fine. For the most part. If you do have a bit of lock on your wheel still, and you hit the curb, especially if you hit the curb with the rear wheel only, you'll spin. Unless you're you're really quick and catch it, as long as you preferably avoid touching the curb. But if you do touch a curb, as long as you straighten your wheel, uh, you should be fine. Now the run between uh, turn one and turn two is very important, uh, and it seems a couple of people uh, lose some time uh, through here commonly, uh, simply because they they go all the way right uh, to the right side of the track before they turn in for turn two and three. But really, you don't need to use nowhere near as much as of the width of the track. Pretty much as far to the right as you want to go is at about here. So I think a, a very good reference is the, the seam that sort of runs runs along the track. 
there's two seams. There's one to my left side and one to my right side. So as as long as you keep your left side tires on that seam on the, on the left side, uh, you should be fine. You don't really need to go further out to the right side because you'll find just going out this wide will let you position the car properly for turn two and three. You don't really need, need to go any wider because the wider you go, obviously you're simply covering more distance and you're losing a bit of time that way. Then for turn two, you sort of want to be braking. Again, you sort of have to, have to guess a bit when you have to turn in uh, for turn two while you're riding that seam on the track because it's blind like a lot of the corners on this track so you really have to do it over and over again until you, until you get a feel and, and you can sort of guess uh, when you have to turn in or even if, if someone has a good reference point they could share it it may be helpful for, for some people but personally I, I just drive it over and over again until, until it feels natural and you can just guess where you have to turn in turn to really you just want to position the car for turn three and set it up and you don't exactly want to be perfectly parallel to the track through here you sort of want to be parallel to the track but all the way back here as you start braking right before the uh, the stripe line in front of me so you're still so at this angle you'll you'll find you're still braking sort of diagonal and aiming towards the apex a tiny bit. You still have to turn, don't get me wrong. If you get the car parallel to uh, to the track further on, you'll find you have to slow the car down a whole lot more simply because the turn is, is a lot sharper. Really, you're, you're, you're sort of aiming the car towards the apex as you're braking a tiny bit, just keeping it uh, parallel to the curve on the left. So you'd be braking, braking, you're just shifting down to, you come in in fourth, so you'd simply shift down into third. And through turn three, it's it's one of those corners I don't enjoy too much because it's it's sort of vague how much, how much, uh, how much of the curve you can use without getting an off track. In the past, it, it used to be a lot better because the car would bounce quite a bit if you used the second bit of the curb through here. But nowadays it doesn't seem to do that. So as much as you can use of this, the better your lap time will be through here. So you simply have to get used to how much of it you can use without getting the off track. Just using as much of it as you can. And on exit, going into the SS, you might be tempted to simply get on the throttle as quickly as you can. And you'll find you won't run out of room through here but just because you got on the throttle a bit earlier further on down the s's you'll have to eventually lift just to make the landfall as opposed to maybe delaying the throttle a tiny bit coming out of turn three and then that'll allow you to carry a tiny bit less speed but that at the same time that'll also allow you to do the rest of the s's full throttle so you wanna sort of ignore your instinct to get on the throttle as quickly as you can. Maybe delay it a tiny bit, just so that you don't end up all the way on the curb uh, right at the beginning. Uh, you should really uh, want to use the curb, but you want to get on it a bit further on, just so that you're, you're not uh, carrying too much speed. And through here, you just want to keep the car as tight as you can on the curb. Uh, just be careful to not use too much of the curb because then you'll find uh, the bottom of the car starts scrubbing on the curb itself and you sort of simply go straight on <laughs> uh, I mentioned, I'm going to mention something real quick to Johnny and, and the reason for that is he's already shared it with me it helps you keep your traction oh. through there is that right as far as yeah yeah yeah, yeah so so writing the curb on the left side simply because your car is at a bit of an angle so the the left side of the car is a bit higher than the right side uh, there'll be a bit more weight on the outside tires which are doing most of the work and because of that they'll have a bit more grip so you do gain a bit more grip by getting on the curb as opposed to simply keeping all four tires on on the pavement in this corner 
not always always the case. So depending on the speed you carry through there, that'll really determine how far wide you have to go uh, setting up for the SS. But really, most people seem to uh, want to get all the way to the left uh, side of the track before turning in for the, for the SS. Really, you don't need to go that far back. You can keep the car again at around uh, where the seam in the track is. So about this far, you can still keep the car and, and turn in properly and make the SS full throttle anyways. But at this sort of positioning, you want to turn in before the curving on the left side starts, and you should be able to, to nail the corner pretty consistently. All right, so now this uh, long right-hander before the back straight. So you arrive here in, in fourth gear. Uh, you've done all of the S's of uh, full throttle. You arrive here in fourth gear. Right around this point is where you're turning in. But through here, you really shouldn't try to use a turn in reference. Simply keep an eye out for your apex instead and get used to doing it that way. And your apex should be the the very end of uh, of that blue and white curb on, on the inside of the turn. Just the very end, that's, that's where your car will, will run over. And through here, you're definitely obviously lifting off the throttle, or maybe even some people are, are brushing the brakes. I've been doing both. I'm still not sure which one's quicker. But I think most commonly, people are simply lifting off the throttle. I think a good piece of advice is not only for this corner, but really most corners where you have to lift off the throttle for. Turn in first, full throttle. So you're full throttle turning in. And while you're on the corner, that's when you get off the throttle. And when you get off the throttle, make sure you get completely off the throttle. Because just the quicker you get off the throttle, the more aggressive that the weight transfer on the car will be. So just because you're quicker off the throttle, the car will decelerate a bit more than if you're really gradual off of it. And that deceleration will shift the weight of the car forward, so it'll give the front tires a bit more grip. And you'll simply churn more and be able to carry a bit more speed uh, through the corner itself. So you're simply lifting in fourth gear and you're apexing right at the end of, of the curb. So just through here. And through the rest of the corner, it's very important to keep the car pretty tight towards the inside, simply because, again, you're covering very little distance com compared to going the, the fast but long way around. So really, you want to sacrifice a bit of speed, but instead, you'll gain quite a bit of time simply because you're uh, covering way less distance. So really, y you don't want to be further apart than maybe a car's width from the inside of the corner throughout throughout the corner. So this is as far as you'd, you'd want to be. Then you start to come back in. Finally, the, the chicken. You'll find this is probably the most important corner in the track and also well I think all corners in this track are tricky to nail consistently but this one's this one's also pretty tricky and it's and it really hurts you if you get it wrong because because not only do you hurt just that last stretch of acceleration until you get the, to the start finish line but you also end up losing time for the next lap quite a bit of time and and really if you think about it, it also leads to the longest uh, stretch of acceleration in the track. So it's it's really, really important to to get it right. For braking, I'm arriving here in, in fifth gear, so I'm shifting down three times into second gear. I start braking right after that uh, white line uh, running across the track. So at around this point is where I would start braking. Uh, again, perfectly parallel to the track. 
not using the curbing just so that my braking is a bit more uh, efficient and consistent. And I think the most common mistake through the chicane is to try and drive it like a chicane. In a traditional chicane, what, what you want to do is sort of trace the straightest line you can between the two apexes. Whereas here, you really want to treat it like, like a really tight corner and then a sort of crooked straight. After the first apex on the left side, you want to be able to get on the throttle and not get off of, off of the throttle to reach turn one the next lap. So you want to sacrifice uh, your speed quite a lot through the first part of the chicane, through the left-hander, just so that you're able to get on the throttle very early and completely and not have to lift off till you get to the end of the lap or even till you get to turn one to the next lap. So you'll be churning in and through here you can get away with using quite a bit of grass on the inside beyond the curb without getting an off track. And you want to, instead of what you would do traditionally in a, in a chicane is sort of have the car towards the middle of the track at this point, you want to keep the car very far to the left just so that you set up that right-hander and you're able to, by this point, be completely on the throttle in second gear run over the curb, still full throttle, uh, run over the exit curb, still full throttle, shifting into third. And you would, you, know, you don't have to carry, you don't have to uh, get off the throttle just to make that second section of the chicane. But it's really important to simply uh, focus on, on just sacrificing a bit of speed on the left-handers just so you get that extra exit, exit speed. And now through the last corner, it's pretty much full throttle any any line you pick to use through it. But you can gain a bit of time by not going as far wide as, as the curving or the edge of the track on the left side. So really, again, this seam on the track is probably as far as you need to go. So just running the car uh, on the middle of it, that's probably as far as you need to go to be able to turn in and make the corner still full throttle. And again, that only means that, that you're covering uh, less distance. You're gaining a bit of time that way. That would be the lap. Anyone have any, any comments, questions, anything uh, they'd want to add? You usually stay off that curb on the right on the last corner. Oh, yeah, 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 you can it doesn't hurt you too much, but I think if if you do use it every lap in your race, you can end up damaging your front wing a bit. Just when you when you bounce down, when the car bounces down, it can sometimes hit the front wing on on the ground, and that might damage it if you do it over and over again. Whereabouts uh, are you shifting into fifth gear on the last turn? Uh, in miles per hour. Uh, so I, I, have, I have a G27. If that helps you, uh, I simply, for every gear, I really shift till the end of the uh, LEDs once they're flashing. But if you have any other wheel, I think a best way to tell uh, initially before you get used to the sound is just by looking your uh, looking at your speedo. So really, shifting into fifth, I'm I'm doing 108, 109 miles per hour, which would be 107. 576 kilometers per hour shifting into fifth but if, if you're sh uh, unless you're shifting very very early it's not a huge deal uh, it's not a huge time loss but, uh, but that would be the the ideal shift point for fifth um, anything else um, yeah so for uh, I don't know if Chris Chris Chrome is still on and, and you as well I'll ask both of you um, any tips on this track for those who haven't raced it uh what to look out for right as far as the traffic goes um to give tips to the the guys here right what do you look out for what are you watching for as you go through turn one what are the dumb you know the for lack of a better word but dumb mistakes that the people are making that cause problems going three wide in a certain area so on and so forth any, any recommendations on that that either of you have i think christopher would be better for this because I, I i haven't raced 
this layout in like two years, so I, can't, I don't remember much. Uh, I, I can, from from what I can see, I can probably tell you, at least from the, from the longer layout where you have the exact same corners for the first section of the track. Uh, for the first corner, you should really never try to defend the outside because because you'll you'll find you'll get a bit too greedy and you'll you'll end up off the track. And it's it's a great way to if you're not able to get past someone, uh, just try to every single lap, even if you know you're not going to make the pass, just take the inside. And uh, even if you know you're not even going to attempt to pass him, uh, just take the inside just to see if he outbreaks himself and, and, and goes off the track, because it's, it's very common to uh, push someone into that mistake. It's very easy to do. Uh, and through turn two and three, uh, my recommendation is, unless you really trust uh, the person you're racing, uh, don't try to pass through there because it's easy enough to pass elsewhere in the track so there's there's no reason to risk it really so be patient any any other chris uh, are you still if you're still here yeah i'm here i i don't have anything else really uh dramatic the problem with this short layout <clears throat> especially for two drivers who are similarly paced <clears throat> is really the main passing zone is coming onto the back stretch down into the chicane and depending on where you are at a skill point the guy that's making the pass often breaks too late and blows through the corner and so if you're being passed you just have to have the mindset especially if you're in a second or third split that that guy probably is not going to know what he's doing going into that corner and is going to be going in too hot so you know johnny's coming down the hill and if somebody's coming around him, invariably in the lower splits, they will try to break at the same brake marker after having taken a pretty long draft, and they'll fly right into the sand or potentially loop the car in the middle of the chicane and collect you with it. So that's the only thing I would say is if you're going to be passed, just lift, let them get by you, and get them later if you can. So that, that's a good point. And we'll see that tonight. And I know a lot of, several of you are new. So after we go into the actual traffic situations and stuff, we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of uh, racing in, in groups, right? And it's a great way to learn that. But pay real close attention, because the first time I did that was on Summit Point. I was on the inside line of turn one, didn't know anything about racing, took it nice and fast. Woo, I'm passing. I had drafted exactly like you said, so I've got more speed coming in, right? And I just blew straight through. Um, so, so really keep that in mind as you're going through there, right? You gotta, you gotta maintain that line and you gotta pass uh, correctly. You're gonna mess it up for sure. Uh, well, many of us will. Um, so, so, you know, keep that in mind as you learn it, uh, going through there, right? Correct it the next time and, and don't be afraid to try it again, but just make sure you're correcting your errors. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll say as well is if you aren't aware, uh, Johnny was the 2016 GT Academy real life race world winner um, of that who, who uh, cares though <laughs> race race last season really good guy really <laughs> humble and but, but as well um i mentioned that because he does training on here so if you want one on one training he does offer his services so feel free to pm him if you want a session um i, I know from my own personal experience that it, it, it helps greatly because they're going to recognize the mistakes that you're doing. I mean, even when he's walking you through this track, it's like, I, I would have never, I could have did this thing 500 times and I probably never would have realized, oh, if I do it this way, I do it this way, then I get this result. That's just the way my, my brain just doesn't work you know, quite like that. But anyway, it's just, it's just something to mention. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, so that's um, it. Did you want to do a lap full speed and then we'll jump into the um, uh, open uh, do you guys, just one? Do you guys want a lap? Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. yeah. We paid all this money for, you know. Yep. <laughs> all right, I'll shut up cuz they can't talk and drive at the same time. So yeah, if you're starting a new lap, it's very important to uh, nail that last chicane because you can lose quite a bit of uh about time just from the run between uh the start and finish in turn 1. <laughs> uh, never mind. I'm super <laughs> fast when I'm in your cockpit. <laughs> uh, it's all the pressure, right? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. 
I'll go back around. See, turn one sucks for everybody. He's just showing what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I was going for. For example, that time I used quite a bit of grass, but I didn't get enough track. So it's really, really have to guess where the off track is. Uh, but yeah, the turn three was pretty awful. The lap was pretty awful. I meant to scream. Yeah, it was awful. Man, terrible. Oh my god, 1.54. <laughs> we got to get a new track. I, I told you guys you was slow. I warned you before we started. So cool. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> 